Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and uh, you are still watching Cairo Local Time. And now we are joined by Dalia, Mrs. Dalia Ibrahim. She is a tourism expert, and she is going to talk to us about the tourism industry and how it is performing. As the chairman of the Egyptian Red Sea Hotels Association said that the Red Sea Hotels uh, and the Red Sea region in general is gaining momentum with occupancy rates of 80% and rising. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Shreen, and uh, good afternoon to your esteemed viewers. Yes, uh, yes, Ms. Dahlia. Uh, uh, as uh, we have just seen the report uh, on uh, Red Sea region and uh, how it is gaining uh, momentum and its occupancy rates now is rising uh, with 80% occupancy rates. So how do you see this uh, report by the chairman of the Egyptian Red Sea Hotels Association? Uh, well, first of all, um, uh, all, all of us working in the tourism field, we are so glad that tourism is picking up again. Yes. after a, a, a long period of lockdown because mm. of the COVID. Uh, and uh, there are many, many measures taken by uh, the Minister uh, of Tourism and Antiquities, Dr. Khaled Anani, uh, the Minister of Aviation, and also uh, uh, great efforts from the Egyptian government yes. uh, um, to, uh, for tourism to pick up again. Mm. Many promotions, many offers, uh, discounts on entrance tickets, um, uh, uh, discounts on air tickets, uh, there are also uh, many, many festivals, uh, many concerts, cultural events, uh, diplomatic events and sports events uh, that uh, are very active in Egypt in the past couple of months, uh, just to give back the trust to, to tourists to come back, uh, everything is uh, back mm. to normal. Uh, we are um, uh, taking all our um, health measures against the COVID. Uh, you know, maybe that was the topic raised before that many um, of the working uh, members in the tourism field, in the hotel field, have mm. been fully vaccinated. Uh, we are back on track now to welcome our guests from the different parts of the world. And one positive uh, uh, issue which happened last month is removing the trade restrictions from Egypt. Uh, they announced actually um, Yes, Ms. Daria? Yes, I'm with yes. you. Can you hear so, me? So, yes, you are talking about uh, lifting uh, travel bans uh, on uh, different Egyptian resorts. So, do you expect a tourism, a tourist uh, boom in, uh, Egypt, in Egypt, uh, Egyptian destinations during the last quarter of 2021? It's very promising. Um, bookings uh, are, are really uh, back on track. Uh, not as strong as before the COVID period like 2018 and 2019, hmm. but still uh, we have high hopes they are going to pick up again. Yes. Uh, um, uh, let me talk to you about uh, the, the measures taken by the Egyptian government. Hmm. We have four events like the first uh, uh, hockey tournament. Uh, it's been uh, now one of the winter sports that's going to be played in Egypt next, uh, next month. Um, we have also some diplomatic events like the visit of the 15 ambassadors. To Alexandria yesterday, and that was really mm. under focus. Also, uh, yes, Dalia, please. Mm. Yes, yes. Would you like me to add anything else? Yes, we have like uh, yeah. now El Guna Film Festival, uh, which is really a, um, a very positive shows Egypt uh, uh, in, in a bridal atmosphere. Mm. Uh, so we, we are we are really glad that those efforts are. Uh, uh, putting Egypt on the spot again. Also, uh, the inauguration of Kabash Road, uh, to what extent it will facilitate, facilitate movement of tourists and uh, also it will help in promoting tourism? Uh, yes, the Supreme Council of Antiquities, yes. uh, with the help of the Ministry of Tourism, uh, uh, is actually uh, exerting an immense effort, hmm. um, not just in uh, opening uh, uh, this uh, road again between uh, Karnak and Luxor Temple. Lots of renovations are going around uh, Luxor itself. Mm. Uh, in a bridal uh, dress, uh, I see uh, Luxor really uh, 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 witnessing lots of uh, campaigns of cleanliness and mm. improvement. Improvement at Karnak Temple, we've seen that uh, in, in, in the previous month. Um, uh, the opening of the new museum. Um, uh, um, actually, the inauguration of the um, uh, obelisk in Bahrain Square mm. with all the ram headed sphinxes and the avenue of sphinxes uh, uh, opening next uh, November 4th. Mm. 
uh, corresponds with celebrating uh, 100 years of the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. Yes. And that was, a, that was really an amazing choice from the Ministry of Tourism. Yes, also Egypt is expected to participate in the world travel market to be held in London next month. Tell me more about this uh, exhibition and to what extent it is important in promoting tourist destinations during winter season, especially that we have many British tourists who are interested in Egyptian resorts. This is very true. Uh, European travelers, Americans, Canadians, and many mm. other nationalities, um, uh, Russians also, uh, they are really interested in Egypt as a destination. Everyone knows that Egypt is offering a variety, not just cultural tourism. Mm. Uh, we have sports tourism, we have safari, we have uh, uh, Red Sea uh, activities. Um, everyone knows about our worldwide famous yes. corals. So we really offer a variety of uh, activities. Mm. So, um, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, actually, uh, the Dubai Expo is doing a great job. Mm. In addition to uh, uh, the, London ex uh, the, the London Expo also next month, that, that's an event that we, that we never miss. Yes, the London event. Uh, yes, and there's also the one held in Berlin, the ITB. It's also never missed by, uh, by Egyptian travel agencies and uh, the Ministry of Tourism. Mm. Uh, we always have a booth there. We have an excellent presentation. Uh, we have uh, uh, offered also virtual visits during the COVID period, which really encouraged people to come and see the real uh, uh, tourist sites and attractions. Yes. They are really very excited about that. So also, if we talk about promoting cultural tourism in these exhibitions, and do we need more promotional campaigns as we are expecting the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum soon, also uh, in light of uh, unprecedented archaeological discoveries uh, taking place in Egypt, do we think mm. we need more promotional campaigns for cultural tourism in Egypt? Uh, yes, cultural tourism, uh, we are really boosting that because it attracts uh, a, a special level of tourism. Mm. You know, tourists who are after education and after uh, uh, historical sites are completely different from those who come to the resort areas and uh, who come for uh, diving activities and other sports activities. Mm. They are completely a different level and actually Egypt is targeting uh, this level of tourists uh, uh, because this boosts cultural tourism as we have discussed. Mm. We have uh, uh, actually um, advertised um, very well, in a very, very presentable way, hmm. uh, uh, the Mummies Parade uh, that happened a uh, few months ago. Hmm. Um, and uh, we are also advertising for the opening of the gem, the Grand Egyptian Museum. Hmm. We, we advertise very well for the opening of the Nemec, uh, the uh, Museum of uh, Egyptian Civilization, uh, downtown in Cairo. And also many, many uh, museums uh, have uh, been inaugurated recently in Hargada, in Sharm el Sheikh, in Kafr Sheikh, in addition also to um, restoration work. It's been also beautifully advertised. It was fully 100% the work of Egyptian uh, talented artists. Um, so uh, I, I believe that our name on the news uh, uh, abroad uh, and in many international uh, TV channels is very well heard. Yes, uh, also a major uh, celebration is expected to be organized uh, in Luxor to promote the governorate as a tourist destination. Tell us more about preparations for this big event. Yes, uh, we, uh, they are actually preparing, as I told you, it's an event which um, mm. is parallel to the uh, discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb 100 years ago by Howard Carter, uh, the English excavator, in 1922, November 4th. Yes. So it's been decided that this parade for the Sphinx's Avenue, mm. which is about uh, three kilometers long between mm. Karnak and Luxor Temple, is going to be inaugurated at the same time. Yes. Uh, they did immense efforts of restoration work. They removed many old buildings that were like um, an obstacle uh, on this road. It's been mm. very well paved, very well lit. Many sphinxes have been renovated. Mm. And um, uh, they have offered actually, um, uh, there is going to be another uh, uh, concert. Uh, this time it's uh, about God Amon, uh, the main and supreme god of Luxor, Thebes uh, in the ancient times. Uh, because, you know, Karnak and Luxor temples are the houses of worship for God Amun. Yes. So uh, we had this wonderful concert uh, uh, with the song of Isis, 
during the Mummy's Parade. And this time I'm really excited uh, to watch and to hear the lovely words of the ancient Egyptians praising God Amun, the supreme god of Luxor or ancient Greece. Yes. So uh, also reopening several uh, museums emphasized uh, uh, the unprecedented support uh, the state gives uh, to tourism and antiquity sector. And this uh, that took place uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and the government was preparing uh, these museums to be inaugurated after uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So how do you evaluate these efforts uh, by the government? Uh, of course, um, it comes at a very high cost especially that countries were in a lockdown. No one was really interested to, to hear anything about traveling because people yes. were worried about getting the virus. Uh, we made, an, uh, we made a really uh, a step forward in virtual visits, um, not just virtual visits. We also, uh, during the lockdown period, where, where all the sites were getting sanitized, we had um, a live visit to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, uh, yes. to many mosques and churches, uh, and again, during the parade of the uh, Egyptian mummies going to the Nemec Museum downtown, uh, we had a wonderful documentary made by famous Egyptian actors and actresses. They were telling us about restoration work in uh, a very famous Jewish synagogue in Alexandria, uh, uh, the Hanging Church in Old Cairo. Uh, also, they were promoting to uh, uh, the walk or let's say the trip, the holy journey of the Holy Family uh, that uh, traveled to Egypt uh, when Jesus Christ was still a baby. Yes. Uh, so Egypt is only the refuge. <laughs> Also, a few months ago, bloggers, uh, international bloggers visited, I think, Sharm el Sheikh and uh, many tourist destinations in Egypt, and they promoted the, for the country. So uh, tell us more about this. Uh, yes, so, um, they, they took lovely pictures, mm. made lovely videos on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I saw really millions of likes and follows to what they did. Mm. Uh, let me also tell you concerts. You know, we had the Black, uh, the Black Eyed Pea concert um, last month at the Pyramid. Mm. That was the first performance in Egypt. Uh, also, the Red Chili uh, Band had a performance a couple of years ago at the Pyramid too. Uh, so, uh, um, yes, the celebrities, music, musicians, uh, live concerts uh, make people really feel uh, uh, at ease, comfortable, yes. uh, that we can, we can go. I yes. mean, it's safe, we can go now. Yes, I'd like to thank you, Mrs. Dalia Ibrahim, tour guide. Thank you for this precious information. And viewers, by that, we come to the end of today's edition of Cairo Local Time. Thank you for watching.